Hello. I'm going to show you how Putin's allies have spent billions of pounds of stolen money in London without getting caught, and how for years successive British governments have let them do it. Let's take a tour of London with a difference. My name is Oliver Bullough, and I've spent years investigating how this city has become the money laundering capital of the world. It's like a giant washing machine that launders a hundred billion pounds of stolen cash every year. And it has helped keep Putin in the Kremlin. Okay, how does it work? Let's say you're a longtime Putin associate. Maybe you helped run St. Petersburg together back in the 90s. And good news, he didn't forget you. In fact, Putin gave you control of a company he illegally seized from a political opponent. He needs his share to cement his position in power, but what about you? You've now got a billion dollars burning a hole in your pocket. You need to get your money to London. You need to access the most efficient, scaled up money laundering system in the world. First things first, you need a UK registered shell company. If you own your newfound wealth via a shell company, rather than in your own name, no one's going to know it's yours. 810,000. 316 companies were created in the UK last year. Each one popping into life complete with limited liability, legal protections, property rights and all the rest of it. So where are all these companies? Well, 62,259 of them are in this one building, Kemp House in the City Road. Of course, they're not actually physically present here. Water coolers and employees and printers and the like, they're just paying to say this is their address, instead of their real address. Look, it's stupidly easy. I'll do it for you. Type any old nonsense in the box. No one checks if it's accurate or not. Click, done. You'll have the documents in two days' time. You can register your company to Bart Simpson if you like, because nobody checks. Now, it doesn't mean every company registered in the UK is up to no good. Many aren't. Lots of people have legitimate reasons for doing it, but many don't. Boris Johnson has just promised to do something about this, but politicians have promised this before. And frankly, I won't believe him until it's done. Okay, let's see what happens next. So, Companies House lets you own your new company offshore. So you can create a company in, say, the Seychelles, and use that company to own your British company. And that means nobody will know that you own it. Of course, you're supposed to tell Companies House the identity of the real owner, but no one cares if you do or not, which is good news because you're not going to tell them and you're going to use your company to spend a lot of stolen money. Now, this is a critical cog in the money laundering machine. Johnson says he's introducing a new law to change that, but even if he's serious, it will take a year for it to be effective. It took the invasion of a sovereign European nation for him to even contemplate this simple step. Meanwhile, for two decades, Putin's cronies have been allowed to hide their wealth here. Okay, so you've created an identity, a shell company, you can use to hide the money that Putin let you steal from his political opponent's company. You gave him half the loot, which he'll use to keep a firm grip on the reins of power. And fortunately, he paid you your billion share in Cyprus which is where all the Russian trains tend to get made. So now we need someone to move it from there to here. But who's going to do that? Relax, it's fine. This is London. This is the London office of Deutsche Bank. They moved billions for Russian oligarchs. And this is HSBC. These guys moved hundreds of millions of dollars for the Sinaloa cartel. Trust me, those were very bad people and their money was not clean. British-based banks are notorious for shifting dirty cash. Sometimes they get busted, they get fined a tiny percentage of their profits, and everyone moves on. Now, Johnson could have properly funded the National Crime Agency so they could investigate and stop this, but he didn't. Okay, back to our million dollars. We've stolen it, we've hidden it, we've moved it. Now we need to spend it. This is Harrods, and this is Zamira Hajiyeva. She's the wife of the former chairman of the International Bank of Azerbaijan. 
and between 2006 and 2016 she used 54 different credit cards to spend 16.3 million pounds at Harrods. Now, she ended up being the subject of an unexplained wealth order by the National Crime Agency, but that made her very much the exception. Well, that's because our investigative agencies are too underfunded, dispirited and wound down to do anything about it. Now, Johnson could have announced that our enforcement agencies will be as generously funded as the lawyers employed by oligarchs to protect them. You can't fight grand corruption on the cheap. But he hasn't done so. Instead, he just announced the creation of a new kleptocracy unit within the National Crime Agency, as if changing the sign on the door is going to scare the oligarchs away. We should be spending what it takes to drive kleptocratic cash out of this country. Instead, too often it's been no questions asked. But what if questions are asked about your stolen billion dollars? You're going to need to put a stop to that, but more good news, because Britain has the most stringent libel laws in the world, or some of them anyway. So you might want to throw some of your cash at one of the London law firms which are more than happy to take ill-gotten loot. Then you can drag any inconvenient authors and journalists here to the High Court, where billionaires silence the people asking awkward questions. Okay, things are going well, but what you really need now is property. Somewhere in London where you can turn a slice of your stolen haul into bricks and mortar. That way, given UK property laws, it's going to be almost impossible for the victims of your crimes to ever get their hands on your money. Welcome to Belgravia. This is one of the most expensive postcodes on planet Earth, and the good news is that for decades, Britain hasn't just let shell companies buy houses here, it has let other countries' shell companies own property without ever having to say who the people behind them are. Some 87,000 properties in England and Wales are owned via offshore companies, which prevents us seeing who their true owners are or if they were bought with criminal money. UK property worth £1.5 billion has been bought by Russians with links to the Kremlin or accused of corruption. Nearly £430 million of the property is in Westminster, in London. And more than half is held by companies in Britain's overseas territories and Crown dependencies. Look at this place. It would have cost upwards of £10 million. Who owns it? No idea, because it was bought by a company registered in the British Virgin Islands. Three doors down that way is registered in Panama. Three doors that way is in the Isle of Man. Opposite this place, the British Virgin Islands again, and next door to that, Guernsey. I could keep going round and round and round the streets of London, thousands of properties where we don't know if they were bought with clean or dirty money. We've let the criminals do it. Worse than that, we've flung open the doors and invited them in. If they couldn't have laundered their money here, there'd have been significantly fewer incentives for them to steal it in the first place. And Putin's personal coffers would have been directly hit. The road from Moscow to Kiev passes through Belgravia. For decades, the London laundromat has helped keep Putin in power. It is one of the most spectacular British policy failures of the post-World War II era. Only a new war has forced our politicians to act, but the record thus far of those same politicians has been one of cowardice and complicity. Do not take them at their word. The stakes are too high. We are talking about the long-term security of our nation and the future of democracy. It is time for real action.